In this week's lab, you'll be studying how living things break down fuel sources and use that fuel source to fuel their chemical reactions within their bodies, and then how a byproduct of carbon dioxide is produced. And of course, we call this cellular respiration. So if you turn to page 162 and 163 in your textbook, you can get a good intro to cellular respiration and fermentation. Fermentation is a simpler process which does not require oxygen. Of course, we'll have oxygen present in our lab today, but we'll really be studying the simpler form of respiration. There's a wonderful figure on page 178 in your textbook. It's figure 9.17, fermentation. And it shows two processes by which a fuel source like sugar, glucose, can be broken down by organisms to produce energy-rich ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And a byproduct of this reaction is carbon dioxide. And this is the process that will be happening in the yeast that we'll be studying in lab. So in front of me, I have the living organism that you'll be working with in lab when you study cellular respiration and fermentation. And it's not this plant, which is our focus for the photosynthesis lab, but rather it's the organism that's in this drawer, jar. You may have actually purchased this organism in the supermarket in an envelope, a foil packet, or in a jar like this if you do a lot of baking. And so this is Fleischmann's active dry yeast. And in fact, if we look inside here, what we see is that there are a whole bunch of little tiny grains that are brown in color. And in fact, those are yeast in a resting state. So let's just get a preview as to what you'll be doing in lab. I have here a little beaker full of warm but not hot water. And I'm going to go ahead and pour into my beaker this regular table sugar, just like you might stir into your tea or your coffee at home. So pouring in that table sugar. And I'm going to go ahead and stir that around. This is going to provide the fuel source, the sugar fuel source, for these living organisms. And now, I'm going to go ahead and pour some yeast into my spoon and mix these also into my warm water. So they're in a dry resting state currently. They're unicellular fungi, single-celled fungal organisms, which means they are eukaryotic. And what I'm doing is going ahead and mixing them into my sugar solution. So the sugar should provide them a fuel source. The water should activate them as they come out of their dry stage. And of course, if they're undergoing cellular respiration, there should be a byproduct. That byproduct should be carbon dioxide. So let's see if we can see any evidence of carbon dioxide forming over the next few minutes. So cellular respiration is the process by which organisms break down energy-rich fuel sources, food like sugar, and are able to form the type of molecule that can transfer energy for cellular work for the processes of living things. And of course, that energy molecule is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And so as animals, we consume other things and we break them down and eventually we convert that energy into the usable ATP fuel source. That's exactly what fungi do as well. And our yeast is actually a single-celled fungus. Additionally, green plants, although they can make their own food, in order to use that food that they generated through photosynthesis, they also have to undergo cellular respiration. So remember that green plants give off a byproduct when they're undergoing photosynthesis, and that byproduct is oxygen. But when they undergo cellular respiration, they require oxygen in order to break down those fuel molecules and produce ATP to do cellular work. So plants use carbon dioxide, and they make energy-rich fuel molecules with it during photosynthesis, and they give off oxygen. But during cellular respiration, plants take up oxygen and they use that in the process of cellular respiration to break down those very same food molecules in order to produce ATP, which can do the work of the cell. So let's see maybe how our 
yeast are doing here and see whether they seem to be enjoying that sugar, whether they're coming out of their resting phase and beginning to undergo cellular activities, producing a byproduct of cellular respiration, which of course is carbon dioxide. And of course it's that same carbon dioxide that you and I breathe out. We breathe in oxygen, we use it in breaking down food in order to generate adenosine triphosphate, ATP, and then we breathe out carbon dioxide as a waste product. So it looks to me like we have a lot of foam that's been generated here. Let's get a top view of that as well. Notice how bubbly and thick that is, and all of that bubble that's being produced actually is the byproduct of cellular respiration or fermentation, which is carbon dioxide. And I think that if we left that beaker for another 15 minutes, it would overflow with this bubbly froth. And of course, the gas contained within that froth is carbon dioxide.